it's kind of a pragmatic cause of being teeny mimesis, but I'll, I'll, I'll take it anyway. Um, those props and, and see if that can help us to clarify the, the relationship between, or clarify the kind of fact that computer games, screen-based computer games are, you know, actions, um, but they're also, in a sense, images and, and um, or maybe not. At least that is a debate that many people are uh, interested in. And I think, in some sense, computer games are also images, so we need to consider this. This relationship in, in their in their in their um, form of representation. While doing that, I also think that that Walton's concepts can be can bring something to genre theory. Walton's concepts can bring something to genre to computer game genre theory in many many ways uh, because that is, is in mimesis and, and make believe. That is kind of the, the central one of the central occupations is to is to look at all these various types of representations and see how they mix in various forms and so on. So it's a very obvious toolbox for, for thinking about genre, uh, at least on, on the kind of representational or ontological level of computer games. It's, it's a kind of goldmine, I think, for thinking about important generic differences. Um, one of them would be what, what you mentioned in, in your talk between types of belonging, you know, a Lego building and from outside or acting from inside uh, computer game fictions and, and I think that's a kind of, of um, um, that's uh, you can follow up that perspective and, and, and use that to kind of distinguish between different genres of games also you know strategy games and first person shooters and so on but I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick up uh, uh, something else in theory and see if I can use that as well as a way of Towards the shiny theory, the role of this is what we call this projection. We'll see. If, uh, I think that's also a, almost a kind of a, a byproduct or side effect of this. Um, diegesis, of course, or, uh, is not a term at all. I think it's not even mentioned. I'm, uh, in emesis, I'm not sure, but but it, it, we are moving outside. The framework of emesis and make believe when we start talking about diegesis as a kind of world projection thing. Uh, but still, I think it can help us to clarify that dimension also. Um, and I also added, as a byproduct or side effect, also, I think uh, these concepts, depiction, reflexivity, and world prop, can help us uh, say something about the actuality of computer game representation and the notoriously, uh, um, notoriously general. <laughs> concept of, of interactivity, maybe not a, a theory of interactivity or any sort, but at least some sort of interesting observation uh, that we can sort of um, um, deduct from, from these key concepts. I'm not timing myself here, so you have to. Okay, uh, just, just quickly, um, uh, the concept of Rep representation in Mimesis of, of, of make-believe. Um, the idea that, that representations have as a function uh, that of being used as, as, as props, um, that leads us to the, to, uh, the idea that uh, depictions are a particular type of prop. Depictions are uh, the type of prop that has the particular function of, you might say, support or being able to be used in perceptual games of make-believe uh, or visual games of make-believe. I, I believe also in, in the book this is an expanded expanded concept. So a depiction, a perceptual game of make-believe, or you could say the, the, the pretense of presence in some sense, is something that you can use about about teddy bears or computer games or, or, or paintings, that, that's Edward Munch's uh, self-portrait in Bergen, where I'm from, and I don't know the name of, of the teddy bear. Uh, but in any case, both are depictions. Um, there's a pretense of, to, do it, say, to sum it up very quickly, there's a pretense of, of presence in that we can say that I'm looking at Edward or he's looking at us, something like that. Then we're kind of pretending kind of presence, of course, that isn't there because as far as I know, he's, he, he's, he's not there. And the same way we can say about the teddy bear, 
uh, we're looking at it. to argue is that it, it is possible to push, push Walton a bit here um, and go a bit further and, and sort of make a stronger argument or a sharper argument to make a more rigid distinction um, between teddy bears and, and paintings, um, for example, of, of, of Edward Munch. So what I think could be a, a useful or, or a, at least a possible strategy is to say that the concept that makes um, that makes the the teddy bear um, that we can act with and play with in a fictional or meaningful sense, sense, unlike we can do with painting, is reciprocity. And this concept means, in a the simple explanation, that reflexivity of a prop, a reflexive prop, is a prop that um, that uh, represents itself. Um, uh, a doll, for example, uh, makes it true of itself uh, that it is a doll, so you can carry it around, you can do various things with a doll, whereas the painting of Edward Munch uh, doesn't make it true. If you do something and you carry Edward Munch around, that doesn't make, necessarily make it true that you are carrying him around, you're just carrying the painting, you take, bring it to storage maybe, or you know, transporting it uh, somewhere. So a self-reflexivity, -reflex or the lack of reflexivity in, in a painting um, uh, makes what you might say, you know, uh, the idea of acting on the painting and doing things on the painting becomes irrelevant unless there is some degree of reflexivity on the prop, that the prop represents its act on what is represented. In other words, that, it, that what we're doing with the prop is, is true in the real world and in the fictional world. Um, so I think we can link this to space. Um, there is a, a, a sort of um, sidetrack argument in Mimesis uh, that links li this to space, and I think that is quite important to computer games. Uh, the core of is quite important to computer games. It's not very important in the book, or at least it's an argument that I think is left very quickly. Um, um, but I think it is quite important because I think well, what we can do, we can say that re reflexivity um, um, is, we can use that as a ground for co-presence, which has to do with space, that something is here with us in space. Teddy is, when you're playing with Teddy, he's here in this space with us. He's not on, it, then we're not only talking about a pretense of presence, as in looking at things, but a pretense of co-presence, which implies some sort of actuality that you can, you can do things with it within the game or make-believe. Um, so co-presence, being here, implies agency. So, so that's the kind of violence that I want to do to the, to, to the concepts that, as we find them in Mimesis and make-believe. I want to link those, reflexivity, cope and, uh, and, and, and uh, 
reflexivity and spatiality, or co-presence as I call it, um, and this idea of what Walton would maybe call, you know, less restrictive participation, but I would call agency beyond perception, agency beyond just looking. Um, so non non reflexivity, we can use this kind of more rigid framework. We could say that non reflexivity implies necessarily implies uh, the the projection of some sort of world because if it's not here. Not something that you could potentially act on, then it must be somewhere else, in some other dimension or world or whatever. It's not co present. So he's not co present, or Edward Munch is not co present like that is, uh, and he doesn't recognize us. He's probably looking at all of you now, right? Edward Munch. He's probably looking at all of you. But that doesn't mean that it's officially true that he is looking at all of us now. You know? Uh, um, whereas, if you have a teddy bear and his eyes were moving or something, you know, that, that would make it fictionally true that somehow he was kind of looking around, you know. So, so he doesn't, so paint, uh, when painting is used as a prop in that sense, when you're not carrying it, you could put it to bed and make it off, of course, but that's not the main function. So if you're using it in the regular way, you are not assigned a place or a, or a position in space yourself. Wherever you are in the room, you are in the same place, in the fiction. If I'm over there, it might be, when I'm standing here looking at him, he's looking at me as well. So all of us now are at the same spot in relation to... to that's the important difference between uh, that kind of prop function and the other kind of prop function, which has to do with objects that are not just pretend of present, present Pretense of presence, but co-presence, um, and of course, uh, and that is also, I think, we could say, the basis of agency. Because he's not here, Edward Munch, or because it's not co-presence, agency is out of the question. It's not that we can't interact, but it's the fact that we neither can nor cannot interact with Edward Munch. It, it means it's 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 not even relevant, you know. Because if you say, "Oh, I can't interact." then you kind of assume that you've been stopped, or you're not able to, or you, know, you assume something, that you're not allowed to assume it. It's meaningless to say that I can't interact with the painting, because agency is never relevant in the first place. Kind of rigid framework, how am I doing from that? Okay, that's a kind of rigid framework. So my suggestion then is that, to make it even more rigid, uh, I think when concepts are extremely uh, sharp and non-flexible, uh, I think. Uh, so, this reflection depiction, the, the teddy kind of depiction, we can call a depictive model. I mean, there are many kinds of models. There are climate models and logical models, uh, uh, geometrical models. But it's, in a sense, a, or you could say a concrete model, maybe. I've heard that term in, at, least, at least used in, in military use. They say some models are logical and some are concrete. That's what they say in the army. But we could say it's a depictive model, because what I'm talking about here now is depictions. Other kinds of representations, uh, it's too much to, to include in. Um, and we might call the other, the, the particular kind of prop function, I'm not saying the painting per se, but the particular kind of prop function I have been talking about, the standard default function of this painting is to be used as an image. So a non-reflexive depiction, I suggest we can, we can call an image. Um, so that's the primary function of self-portrait in Bergen, is to be an image. But you could, of course, as I said, use it <coughs> as, um, as, a, as a depictive model if you, if you try to break into the, the rules of the gallery. Um, <clears throat> so, A, actuality, we could also say that uh, depictive models um, um, make a because they in a sense, act. And there's no mystery to that. There's, there's no mystery about the actuality of representation at all, if you're moving within the framework of, uh, of, of, of mimesis. And you can go even further and say that, that uh, world, world project, the world projecting function could be linked to what in other types of theory is called diegesis. That's a little bit, that's a more shaky one, but it, it's, it's tempting at least. Um, it is 
Teddy interactive? No, I don't think so. Teddy recognizes a or is the problem that rec recognizes agency, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to call it interactive. I think um, that's a kind of a side note. Um, so in, in computer games, then um, the dominant model is the Teddy, as as, as I think he also um, both himself argued in his that these kinds of children's make-believe kind of uh, um, uh, play is the dominant model in, in computer games. This is space war. It's co-present. Uh, some kind of touch. This is in a way we can touch it through through this, these kinds of uh, avatars, or what you might call it, and and, and joysticks and, and so on. It's a simulation of, of being able, to, simulation of tangibility in a sense that you could extend and reach and directly touch and, and control things uh, non diegetic But I think we have to allow that that uh, there are uh, there's a range of interesting games that are image based. And I would suggest that we just that they belong to the group of media games uh, because they, the thing that makes it fictional that we do things. For example, I'm solving a mystery or I'm win, uh, rescuing the princess, and I'm doing all sorts of things that become fictional. That fictional relevance is is, is um, rooted in and is generated by uh, structure, by hyperstructure. So you can put all kinds of media elements in here, all kinds of uh, images in a sense, film, move, moving image, or all kinds of things, and you can create a structure that somehow allows you to say when you finish the game that I, you know, I did this and I did that in the fiction. But the images themselves, or oh, no, that's, that's one, you know, the, the pictures of the animations, the drawings themselves, they do not have that uh, prime, that prop function as their primary function. So you are still playing with diegetic fictions. You might call them diegetic games. Interactive games is maybe a, a good term. Um, but in any case, you are playing playing on diegetic fiction, more or less. Um, in a sense, it also comes closer to the kind of the cybertext perspective that, that you're familiar with. You you kind of it's it's an analogy to playing with discourse, you're playing with images. Um, so, that, this, is, this is a side note, I put this in after a conversation uh, yesterday. Uh, so, relevant, but how act on them anyway because of these hypermedia structures. So that's why we call them interactive, and that kind of makes sense. Something that doesn't allow you agency, but you act on it anyway, by means of some clever kind of constellation of several images, then we could kind of call it interactive. And, but it wouldn't make sense to call a, 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 a teddy bear or uh, that kind of representation interactive, I think. So finally, um, to, uh, to address the, the genre thing, just very, very quickly the genre thing, because when we're talking about teddy bear kinds of fictions, which I have claimed now is dominant, at least today, in computer games. In those kinds of fictions, you have three main models. I think three. Uh, one is the, uh, the sort of the robot thing, which is here in space, and you can make you can make that thing as a game, and you play with it, and so on. Uh, and that's kind of default because you have no boundary here. This this is co-present. This has everything that a teddy bear has, and yeah, but it, it can be you know computerized, which is a separate question that I'm not thinking. Very few games use this model. There are elements of it in Animal Crossing, for example, when the game kind of directly communicates with your space, the season, your birthday, or you know, it follows the time, the regular, you know, it's real time and those things. There's a, and ta Tamagotchi, some of you maybe played Tamagotchi electronic pets. They have a significant dimension of the this kind of model, where it, it's in my space and that's it, no boundary. But most games have a boundary, and that boundary, I think, is, is similar to these kinds of boundaries. They're micro-worlds. It doesn't mean that it's a diegetic space in any sense. Uh, I wouldn't say that an ant colony... If I'm playing a game of make-believe with an ant colony, you know, their little micro-world is not, you know. 
projected in the kind, in the way that the world in the novel is projected. It's here, it's co-presence, but there's this thing with, with the scale, you know, and there's a real boundary that I have to cross, so I can use some sort of extension to cross the boundary into the miniature world, which we could say is some sort of prosthetic extension, an avatar, some, you know, a Mario, uh, a spaceship, a racing car, whatever. Um, so that's the miniature model, and the third model of, of non-diegetic is what we could call the theme park model, which, uh, which takes the miniature, the, the snow globe, and somehow allows you to, to dissolve the miniature by kind of going into it through a kind of perceptual avatar. This is what I would call following the kind of theme park model, which in theme park, you know, the kind of fiction is all around you in a perceptual sense. Uh, you could also call it the virtual world. But again, not necessarily a diegesis at any, certainly not in Marvel Madness, I would say, this diegesis. So, these kinds of worlds have a lot of diegetic fiction in them, but they're primarily something else. They have interactive cutscenes, for example. They have painted dog on doors that you have not heard mentioned. So I, my suggestion would be that painted dog on doors, which might also correspond blurry to, to the F factor, is diegetic fiction within a, a format that, in many cases, is primarily a completely other kind of fiction or virtuality or you can call it. Yeah. Because you carry around the picture, you can carry around the image, or it doesn't make a difference to carry around the picture or the image. But it makes a difference when carrying around the image in a computer game or the picture of the computer game. Because when you carry around the picture, you have to carry around the screen. Yeah. And with interacting with the object, you carry around your image. So you can interact with the image without interacting with the picture with the material. Yeah. So, I would say that already Star, uh, Star, <laughs> Star, uh, Star Wars is already an image we interact with, and you said this is not an image. A space war, sorry. Yeah, a space war. Yeah. No, I would say it negates the image, um, because it is, more, it is more comparable to a uh, picture. Hi. Hi. For the body press yeah, framework, on the surface in and front of you. I mean, like in <coughs> things can go on on a small surface in front of you. It can be framed, it can be a different space, and also, but it doesn't have to be. That doesn't mean that it has the image function. You know, when I say image, it's a particular kind of function of the form. It's a function of not being here. You know, you, you don't. You, you can carry around the painting, but it doesn't make sense to say you're carrying around the image. Image means that which cannot be carried around, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but of course, this is a suggestion, so it is debatable, when does the, when does the, the hands-on depiction stop and when does the image begin, or the other way, if we start doing things with the image, if we have links and triggers and stuff, small movable parts, when does it become hands-on and present and co-present and here, when does it stop again? It, yeah, yeah. So it's suggested as a kind of tool to think with in, in that sense, but it's a very valid. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure about more than one thing, but I'm just going to ask one question. Um, namely, you said that the primary function um, would not of, 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 of the, um, games that are not um, diegetic, so to say. Now talking about 
typical 3D, for example, action adventures kinds of games? So are you talking about? Actually, talking very general. Okay. Because my impression is that this is something rather difficult for computer games, but they do have those well, well, elements that you call yeah. Games, like games on Yeah, yeah, games. yeah. Most people, when you when they think about computer games, they think primarily of the kinds that are that are not image based. You know, uh, by default. But so, so I, I agree with you. In most popular games now, you have a kind of virtual world kind of thing, which I think is not as a, as a form of representation. It's not primarily diegetic, but it has all these elements that project worlds. And the interactive cutscene is quite interesting because it, you know, the kind of quick time event thing. It's a typical thing that projects the world just like a film does, and that means you can't play it because. It's but then they kind of try to cheat by making you play on it, which you can do. Just like with a strip of film, you can cut it up and you can put it in a different sequence and all kinds. You can do things, of course, uh, even though you, 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 it's still images. that it's simple. I'm trying to, you know, the computer game representation, particularly, you know, 3D games, or castle elements, are extremely messy and complex. Extremely messy. So this is one suggestion to try one tool to be able to say that, okay, for example, I'm not saying this is a fine, but the stars in the background, you know, are part of what also generates diegetic fiction. But these stars, if we put eyes and mouth and on them, they become characters, and there's also some sort of link between diegetic fiction and characters. So then, then they would be maybe more powerfully project that kind of diegetic fiction. But only as stars, they're kind of weak in terms of their projective power. Yeah. Um, I just would like to go back to the quote about the dominant rule. I think there's something about the location of the dome. Is it mean the dominant yeah. Non-diegetic or the non-world projecting 
the non-world projecting kind of props or the fiction, we recreate them in our, through our actions, through our way of navigating in the game, through our way of looking around corners, walking behind things, walking around the NPCs, walking behind them so they can't see us, you know. So NPCs or characters in games, they are both, you know, NPCs uh, or, or, or these uh, teddy bear kind of depictions in relation to what we actually see, see, what we're actually doing, how we're actually engaged with the game, and, but they're also characters. And as characters, they, maybe as characters, they recognize the painted on door. Not as NPCs, they would never run through the door, because they know that that's, an on, that's a painted on door. The NPC knows that. It will never run through that door, it knows. But the character, in the character's world, you could say that there is a door there, even though it's just painted on. You see what, so, so that, that's my suggestion, though, you can have these rigid comp, uh, and, and, and try and see what you can get out of it. Okay. Thank you very much.